That's right, Logan Paul just weighed in on the James Charles drama that's going on, and he's actually being a better person than Jeffree Star. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul, where we talk about the problem, but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, what I like to do is take a look at different topics going on in the YouTube community, some of this drama that's going on, and try to see what lessons we can learn from them by taking this mess and turning it into a message. So if you're into that stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. So check this out. It was maybe like a week or two ago and one of my YouTube mentors, like this dude who I have the utmost respect for, we were talking in text and he's like, yo, he's like, you need to check out the Logan Paul podcast Impulsive. Like he's actually a pretty smart dude. And I'm like, like really? Like what, what, what are you talking about? Like, like I, I know, I know Logan Paul. Like I don't know him personally, but I've met a million Logan Pauls. Like I would not hang out with his crew, right? Like I'd be friendly with his crew. You know what I mean? But I've also seen Logan Paul, obviously, with his Japan controversy and all those things. And I'm like, this dude doesn't have, like, an intelligent bone in his body. But I also know he, you know, the dude's a millionaire, so he's got some intelligence, right? But anyway, so when my mentor told me that, uh, you know, the, the Logan Paul podcast was actually pretty good, and he had some decent insights, I'm like, eh, yeah, 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 whatever. And I just, I just didn't watch it. Like, I've seen some clips here and there and everything. Actually, one dude who... Um, uh, I actually talked to not that long ago, uh, Kevin Hines, who is the guy who was in Logan Paul's comeback video, who jumped off the Golden uh, Gate Bridge, and now he um, speaks all over the country for suicide awareness. He was recently on the Logan Paul podcast, too. But anyways, anyways, I saw Logan Paul on the Impulsive podcast, just did a video titled Dear James Charles, right? I'm like, okay. Like, I was like, I gotta see. I gotta see what Logan Paul has to say about this situation, right? Like, Logan Paul had the biggest controversy on YouTube to date. Like, nobody is going to beat it. And by the way, by the way, some of you have been asking me when I mentioned, like, Tana Mojo filmed a dead body. Like, go look it up. Like, go watch iNabber's video on it. It was, it was big news. It was, like, big news, but not as big as the Logan Paul one. Like, Tana Mojo vlogged opening up a bathroom door where a dude overdosed and she filmed it and put it up and she since deleted the video. Like, I'm surprised how many people don't know about that story. Anyways, Logan Paul obviously filmed a body in Japan. So I was like, what, what, what's he have to say about this? So in the, in the podcast, he actually talks about how he doesn't like James Charles. He doesn't like James Charles at all. Like he doesn't like James Charles as a person because um, James Charles is like, openly like sassed uh, Logan Paul on Twitter and things like that. Like he's not a fan of James Charles. And Logan Paul actually talks about how he was going to make a video like talking crap and jumping on the hate train for James Charles because he felt this kind of vindication. And let me tell you, let me tell you, like Logan Paul touches on this in his podcast, but he says he no longer surrounds himself with yes men and a bunch of people in his circle we're like, yo, dude, don't make that video. Don't make that video. And Logan Paul talks about something like, hoo, 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 trust me, I know what, he, what he's talking about. He was talking about how since his controversy, he's felt like restricted because he's a creator and he can't create what he wants. And, you know, because people are telling him like it's bad for his brand, it's bad for, you know, all these other things, right? And I can definitely relate. I can relate so, so, so much. I'm going to vaguely touch on it, but you guys know what I'm talking about. With the, Nick, with the Nick Hikado avocado situation going on, I've had so many requests to cover that story, and it's just something I'm not gonna do, all right? Go watch iNabber's videos on it. But I, I understand what Logan Paul's saying. Like, after you have some controversy, you have to be very mindful of it. But, like, first, I just gotta give props to Logan Paul for having that growth. Like, am I, am I a fan of his content? No. Do I agree with the, the, the shameless marketing he does towards kids? No. But... This podcast is great because I think it's like kids don't listen to podcasts. So you get to learn a little bit more about who Logan Paul is as a person and his views on things. And he's actually not that bad. But the next thing I want to talk about is that like I got some heat on my video that was titled like PewDiePie defends James Charles. And here's the thing that people aren't getting like you can you can defend 
a person without defending their actions. And I don't think a lot of people are getting that because with the magnitude of this James Charles situation and how it's blown out of proportion, like you cannot defend that person's actions, but you can stand up and say, yo, yo, like the punishment does not fit the crime, right? You can speak out against things like cancel culture and mob mentality without you know, agreeing with what that person did. I've said it in every video I've done on James Charles. Like, the dude did some scummy things. He has a lot to learn and a lot to grow from, but I am somebody who's a recovering drug addict and alcoholic, so I empathize with this guy, and I believe forgiveness is one of the important things, as long as a person is willing to put in the work to, to improve as a person. And that's something that Logan Paul talks about a lot. He has advice for James Charles and things like that. But where does Jeffree Star come into play? Where does Jeffree Star come into play? Like, Logan Paul, throughout this podcast, I'll touch on a few more of the things he talked about in a second, but he, he is not taking any kind of moral high ground against James Charles. Like, meanwhile, meanwhile, Jeffree Star, who is supposed to be a friend and a mentor to James Charles, is just throwing that dude under the bus. I highly recommend all of you go and watch the new video from I'm Alex talking about this. Like, it is absolutely, like, I feel so bad for James Charles in the aspect of the crappy friends that he was keeping around and the, the terrible mentor he kept around with Jeffree Star. Jeffree Star, here's a screenshot real quick. Jeffree Star has deleted thousands of tweets since this controversy happened. It is so easy. It is so easy for people to take the moral high ground when somebody else is getting kicked in the teeth. It is so easy for someone like Jeffree Star to call James Charles a predator, to say that he's banned from his house, to call him a danger to society. I just watched the new drama alert video on this and um, Kim Star actually talked to James Charles, uh, not James Charles, Kim Star actually talked to Jeffree Star and Jeffree Star told him some things off record and everything like that. Like I cannot imagine, I like unless James Charles like did just something so horrendous. I cannot imagine. I've run through a million possibilities and scenarios in my head. I'm trying to imagine what James Charles could have done that Jeffrey's talking about that Jeffrey hasn't done, which is either A, as bad or B, worse. So like in my opinion, in my opinion, like Jeffrey Starr is being such a terrible person right now. And like, you can, you can denounce a, a person's actions without getting rid of them. Like going back to defending the person's, uh, the person rather than their actions. Like think about if you have a child, like any of you parents out there, my son screws up. My son's a great kid. He's a fantastic kid. Teachers love him, parents love him. Like when he goes over to his little friend's house, but he screws up, right? Like when my kid gets in trouble at school, like if, if the punishment didn't fit the crime and if like the, the teachers or the school was like punishing my son like way more than I thought was like fit for what he did, you're damn right I'm gonna stick up for my son. And that's what disgusts me about people like Jeffree Star in this situation because he's not doing that. Like that would be like me just throwing my son to the wolves and just be like, oh kid, you screwed up, you made your bed. Here you go, the school system, like no, like stick up for him. And I'll be totally honest, in my opinion, two people, two people, Tati Westbrook and Shane Dawson need to make like a full public statement. They've made a couple statements, but like I mean something a little bit more in depth to help James Charles out because nobody thought this was gonna happen. Nobody expected this to happen. Jeffree Star, I don't expect it from him. He's not, he's not the great guy that everybody thinks he is, in my opinion. But anyways, going back to Logan Paul, like Logan Paul discusses what he would do if he was James Charles or his advice to James Charles, which is like understanding that you're not canceled. You're not fully canceled. Like that is great advice. Like he is still going to have a loyal following because James Star, uh, not James Star, what is wrong with me? James Charles is good at what he does. He's good at makeup, he's great at makeup, right? So he has a skill, okay, that is going to keep an audience. He is a great businessman and everything like that. But Logan Paul's advice to James Charles is, you have to work on yourself as a person. Like that's the only thing. And that's all we can do, that's all we can do. Like. 
The hate mob is so brutal. Like people just want somebody to delete their channel, disappear into the mountains forever, which is absolutely ridiculous. Like imagine if you screwed up at your job and like you're just never supposed to be in that career again for something that is not even like that bad. And when I say that bad, like Logan Paul goes into quite a bit of his own opinion about how labeling James Charles as a secu sexual predator is absolutely ridiculous and people need to chill out with that nonsense. Like they mentioned like, you know, people like, uh, it was either R. Kelly or Michael Jackson, like those are sexual predators. Like you are, you are lumping James Charles into a category with people like R. Kelly, okay? So like people need to chill out with that mess. But it's, it's just amazing to me that you have somebody like Logan Paul who is showing more empathy and maturity than somebody like Jeffree Star. Like, I think people really need to process that. And like, like Logan Paul talks in his pro podcast, like the beauty community is absolutely ruthless. And the best way I can sum it up is it feels like the beauty community is just filled with people who have black and white thinking, who are willing to step over each other, and it is just, it's brutal. I'll leave you with this. One of my favorite people to read books from, to watch YouTube videos from, to follow on social media, is Gary Vaynerchuk. And what Logan Paul talks about why he didn't like kick James Charles while he was down is what Gary Vaynerchuk talked about. And he Gary always says this, like a lot of people try to have the biggest building in town by tearing down all of the other buildings. But the thing to do with integrity is to just build the biggest building in town. And that's the problem we see with the beauty community is everybody is trying to tear each other down. And looking at this thing, now that it's kind of like, you know, calming down a little bit, we have to check in with people like Jeffree Star's motives. Um, I don't think Tati Westbrook had uh, poor motives. I, I think she, I think she's reflecting on this situation and realizing that, you know, maybe she should have handled this in a different way because nobody, nobody on earth could have seen this company coming. But, but the, one more thing, the thing that bums me out is how people like Shane Dawson, Tati Westbrook, and so many other people co-sign Jeffree Star's bull crap, right? They co-sign him and God only knows why. It's because when Jeffree Star does it, it's totally okay. When Jeffree Star deletes thousands of tweets, everybody turns a blind eye, doesn't question it. Like where are the people in Jeffree Star's life to say, hey Jeffree, remember when you did literally the exact same things? Do you remember that? Hey, Jeffrey, do you remember when you were saying openly racist slurs? Like, why is nobody in Jeffrey's inner circle calling that? In fact, Jeffrey Star is currently number two trending on YouTube right now, okay? Just completely enabling him. Like, I don't know, this whole situation has had me change my opinion on Jeffree Star as a person. And what I want you all to take uh, take away from this is like, look who you're hanging out with. Look at who kicks who when they're down and, and everything like that. Like, just check in with this stuff. And you know what? Like, makeup is cool. Makeup is fun. If you like doing makeup, you do you, boo. But the other thing you should do is watch Swoop's new video. I'll link that down in the description with um, with the new I'm Alex video as well as the Impulsive podcast. But Swoop talks about why she kind of got out of the beauty community because it's absolutely brutal. Anyways, this video is a lot longer than I thought it was gonna be. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell because I make a ton of videos. And a huge, huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. You're all amazing. And if you would like to help support what I'm doing here, get access to our monthly Q and A, some other perks, benefits, get your name in the credits, click or tap right there. All right, thanks again so, so much for watching. I'll see you next time.